There won't many people ask that or pray that, I promise you that. I want to thank you for the storm, but I'll tell you what, it's in a storm sometime that God has got our attention and drawn us closer to Him. So uh, if that happens, uh, I think we ought to thank Him for the storm. I've preached in prisons, uh, that big prison over in Alexander County. I was a part of that for a while, not as an inmate, but they would let me in and let me go. And I've told them guys, I told them, I said, if putting you in here, I said, if you've got saved since you've been in here, you ought to shout. And uh, I said, what you, you know, what Satan meant for evil, God turned it for good and redeemed your life. And uh, whatever the storm comes, if whatever it takes to get you closer to the Lord, I say hallelujah. And uh, there ain't many people going to say hey, amen to that because we don't like the storms. We want, we want, uh, we want the sunshine. I think Jerrica sung that part when it talked about, uh, we, our hearts at ease when we have sunshine and blue skies. Well, I want to tell you that ain't life. And that ain't real. Uh, because it ain't always going to be that way. But I want to preach to you this morning about something that we all have. Uh, at least if you, if you don't have it this morning, we will have to call 911. Uh, I want to preach to you on you about your heart, about your heart, and uh, they've got it up on the screen there. That's a heart beating, and uh, if your heart ain't beating, if you'll raise your hand, we'll go get the shocker and we'll call nine one one. And uh, but we we're taking for granted this morning that everybody's breathing and heart beating this morning. Uh, but I want to ask you a question just in getting started: What kind of heart do you really have? What kind of heart do you really have? Now, I've heard people say, well, you, they, they know my heart. They just know my heart. And I've heard people say, oh, they've got the best heart. I don't tell you something. No, you don't. No, you don't. And I'm going to read a verse of Scripture. i got so much I don't know where to get started. And praise God, I ain't got a timer today. Amen. <laughs> Y'all's in trouble. But I want to ask you to look with me in Jeremiah chapter number 17 as we'll begin reading and looking. And I've got so many scriptures wrote down, I just don't know what to do with myself. But I want to talk to us about the heart. And while you're turning, I want to try to explain to you what I'm talking about. And I'm really not talking about the organ that's in your chest beating. I'm really not talking about that. What the... Hebrew and the Greek, what they tried to understand and what the Bible writers is trying to get us to understand when they say our heart, they're really not talking about the thing that's beating in our chest. They're talking about the center of our emotions, the center of who you are, and really who you are when nobody else is around. And uh, they're talking, it goes as deep to think about your the intent of your heart, the intent behind what you say, it, it talks about what he's dealing with is really, you may tell somebody you love them and in your heart you don't even like them. Well, the Lord knows that. And he took a record of that. And you didn't get credit for saying you love them. Because he's looking at the thought and the intent behind your motive. That's what he's talking about. So I, I want us to consider our own heart. And it's easy to look at the pew. Uh, it's easy to look at somebody and say, well, boy, they, they need a new heart. They need a different heart. Hey, I want to tell you something. We all need a different heart. We all need what God has for us. But this verse right here is going to reveal our heart. 
Even to you that say, well, I've got a good heart. My heart's in the right place. I just know my heart's right. Hey, here, here's a picture. If you want a picture of our heart, your heart, my heart, this is where it is. It says the heart is deceitful above all things. I'm going to pause right there and tell you, your heart has the ability to convince you that you are something that you're not. It's deceitful. It'll lie to you. Your heart will lie to you. It says it is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? When people say, well, I just know my heart. No, you don't. We do not know our own hearts. We do not know the capability of our own heart because He reveals in these Scriptures what our heart really looks like. So let's pause for a word of prayer. And I'm going to challenge you today. As we're praying, as I'm praying, I want you to just, you know, if you pray out loud, that's fine. But I want you to ask the Lord, reveal my heart. Lord, show me my heart. I want to know where my heart is with you. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, we adore you. We worship you. We praise you. Lord, we thank you for the choir this morning. How they have led us to a place that our hearts are tender. Lord, I pray that you would help us this morning to get a real picture, a real understanding of where my heart is. And Lord, I pray for every individual, Lord, that you would reveal to us in our time together, Lord, where our heart is. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would move upon hearts. Lord, they may be some hearts that don't know you today. Lord, that's lost. If you would come or they would die today, they would spend eternity in an awful place called hell. We know that is not your heart for them to do that. And I pray, Lord, that you would speak to them, draw them. There may be some today that's out of your will. Their heart is not where it needs to be with you. And I pray, Lord, by your word and your power, through the Holy Spirit of God, that you would deal with us according to your word and according to your purpose. We love you. We praise you. We adore you again. And we just want to tell you we love you in Jesus' name. Although it, uh, it appears on the outside that most of us probably have a good heart. But I'm here to tell you Jesus looks way past the exterior into the interior. And He's looking upon what our heart really is. So I want to encourage you today to throw your heart wide open to the Lord and ask God to reveal to you your heart. Matthew chapter number 15. He reveals to us that our mouth don't always reveal our heart. We may say things that we really don't mean. We may tell things, and in this text, they are drawing nigh unto the Lord with their mouth, but the Lord reveals to them the truth. He said, your heart is far from me. Matthew 15, 8, it says, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. They know how to say it. They know how to talk. They know how to give word and lip service. They know how to sing. Oh, how I love Jesus. They know how to tell people what they want to hear. But Jesus said, they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So I challenge you today that you get past your words and that you ask God to reveal your heart. We say things. These people, would no doubt, was probably giving Him flatteries, was giving Him honor with their mouth, but their heart was far from what they were saying. Now, if I went to every individual in the church today, I, I feel pretty strongly that I, if I ask you, do you love Jesus, you would say, yes, I do. I love Jesus. But I wonder if Jesus would be as honest with us as He is them. That He would say, your heart's far from me. Your lips are saying one thing, but your heart is expressing a total different thing. 
Jesus is telling the truth. And if, and I've said it before, if most, if, if preachers was as honest with Jesus, we'd probably be uh, looking for a job next week. Amen. And that's all right. So I'm going to try to be honest with what God has laid on my heart. People know how to talk a good talk. We know how to say good things. But that really is not what Jesus is looking for. He's looking upon our hearts. He is revealed. He is wanting us and He's wanting to expose this morning what my heart really looks like. I hope we understand that we cannot get away with just lip service and word service. We, he is looking upon the heart. He is looking at the intent of our heart and the motive behind that because He understands the intent. I know my heart. Well, in Jeremiah, he told me, he said, who can know it? I don't, hey, I know my heart. My heart is exactly what Jesus said, or the Lord said it was right here in these verses of scripture. It is deceitful above all things. My heart is going to take care of me. My heart is going to do, hey, if I do not govern it through the Holy Spirit of God, it is going to be selfish, it is going to be greedy, it is going to take care of me, and that's what I'm going to look out for. He said, he said, and desperately wicked. He, my heart is desperately wicked outside of Jesus Christ. If I do not have Christ in my life, then this is where I am with Him. Desperately wicked. That word uh, deceitful means this. It means to be crooked. It means to be polluted. This morning, if we would be honest with God, and I hope and pray that you are, because He knows anyway if you're not. Hey, if we would be honest with God and say, my heart is crooked. Not that my heart is clean, but my heart is crooked. Lord, I don't even love you like I think I love you. Because it is revealed in my actions when I do things that God does not want me to do or say things God did not want me to say, then, I, then I, something is amiss. I'm crooked. I'm not lined up with what God would have polluted. If we would be honest with ourselves and be honest with God and be, confess it with our mouth and say, God, my heart is polluted. I have things in my heart that of unforgiveness. I have things in my heart that I'm just unwilling to forgive people. They hurt me. You know they hurt me. And I'm unwilling to forgive. I'm unwilling to forget. We have sin in our life that we may never tell anybody about, but God knows that sin. God knows that sin is in my heart. So first of all, I want to say to you, we have to understand the condition of our heart. My condition of my heart, not the heart that's beating in my chest this morning, but the condition of my heart before God. My thoughts, my intents, my desires, the center of who I am, what makes me me and what makes you you, that we come to that place, that we understand it. The first thing that we have to understand, if I've not ever been born again, saved by the grace of God, I have a dead heart. I'm dead toward the things of God. I'm dead toward spiritual things. I'm dead toward the Word of God. I'm dead toward spiritual. I'm not interested in it. I'm dead. We can, somebody can talk to you about Jesus till they turn blue in the face and you say, yeah, oh, I believe, yeah, I believe that. And then you turn right around and walk out the door unchanged, unconcerned, unconverted, and we just keep on doing it. If we are doing that, we have a dead heart. And we know not God. Our lips may say, I made a profession of faith on an altar somewhere. But honey, it is more than your words. It is a life that you are living day in and day out. If all we are banking on is my... He tells us in the Word... That's how powerful the Word of God is. We have to examine my life. I examine my life by not what I say, but I examine it with the Word of God. Has old things ever passed away? Has old things ever become new? Am I a new creature in Jesus Christ? 
Has Christ made a difference in me? Changed me. Ezekiel, the Bible says it twice in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 11 and verse number 19 and 36 and verse number 23. He says the exact same thing twice. And I feel like if he says anything one time, we ought to listen to it, we ought to abide by it, we ought to obey it. And if he repeats himself, then we definitely should pay attention to this and find out what God is saying to us through this. Listen to what he says. He said, I will give them one heart. Let me ask you a question. I know where I am. I mean, I have not bumped my head uh, lately anyway. I know where I am. Are we as a church one heart? I challenge you. We gripe about this and we complain about this and we talk about this and we talk about people and we talk about everything but Jesus. I'm telling you, we ain't going nowhere until we come one heart. We got to come together. We got to come in unity. We've got to come in prayer. We've got to come seeking God. We've got to quit pointing the finger. And it ain't my way. It ain't supposed to be your way. This ain't Burger King. If you want Burger King, go down there and they'll fix it however you want it. But church ain't Burger King. Church is the house of God. We are to be the people of God. And He's got to give us one heart. And that heart is a heartbeat. That heart is beating. And it is to be beating after the Lord Jesus Christ. Outside of that, your preference and my preference really don't matter. I, I, I'm telling you, we may get judged on some of our preferences. I don't know, but he said that he's going to give them one heart. Do you have one heart? Do you have a heart to see people born again? I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm, I told you I was going to try to be honest. Some Christians, I don't want what you got. I just don't want it. If it brings out a complaint and a fuss and a murmur and a grumble and a gripe ever about everything, I'm out. I don't want it. People that you work with, you ought to go in tomorrow morning. I don't care if all four tires are flat. And the last time I said that, I had one. <laughs> Amen. But me and Hope, he smiled the whole time, praise God, and we got the tire fixed. And the devil didn't do it. I ran over something. <laughs> it was a nail. But I'm telling you right now, if you complain and you murmur at work, and you complain about the church, and then you wonder why they won't come to church, go look in the mirror. Go take a good long look in the mirror and say, It's me. Oh, God, it's me. My heart ain't one. My heart ain't one with you. Uh, because we ain't supposed to be... I don't know if y'all know this or not, but we ain't supposed to be complaining and murmuring. Amen. We are to express to others what Jesus Christ has did for me and what He will do for them. Hey, is your heart one? Hey, are we one with Christ? Is it joined with Christ? I don't see Christ complaining about anything. And if anybody could have complained, He could have. But He didn't. So may God help me and God help us that we would come to that place. He said, I will give them one heart. I will put a new spirit within you. Can I ask you a question? Has God ever changed your spirit? Has He... Amen. I hear some amens over here. On this side, this side. I don't know yet. I ain't heard nothing. Has He put a new spirit in your heart? Are you different than you used to be? Hey man, does he change your want tos? He'll change you. He'll put a new desire in that heart for you to do that. He said, I will put a new heart within you. I will take out the stony heart. That's a dead heart. Dead toward the things of God. A natural man does not want God. 
In your natural state, people can tell you about God and you can give a rip about Him. You are not interested in the things of God. The natural heart, it's a dead heart. It's a dry heart. You ain't, ain't nothing to it. You may grin. I, I'll, I'll get to see this woman in heaven now. I'll tell on myself. I come out of the music eye over in Hickory. How many of you remember where the music eye was? You're telling on your age. Amen. I come out of there with a buddy of mine, and I had two tickets in my back pocket to see ACDC. I seen this little woman cutting through cars at the old Catawba Mall. I said, oh, she's a coming for money. She's a coming after something. She was a making a big, she was in a hurry. Whoop, she was, whoop. She come up to me and that boy as we was getting in his car. She said, can I ask you boys something? I thought, here it comes. Here it comes. She said, do you know Jesus? You know what I said? Oh, yeah! Got two tickets in my pocket going sending me to hell. Amen. I'd have helped you, Mom and Daddy. You know, I was going down there to party. I wasn't going down there to worship. I was going to party. I said, oh, yeah! Do you know, that's been... I was 18 years old or 19, and I'm telling you what, I'm 53, and I still remember that little woman. Do you know Jesus? Oh, yeah, me and that boy both. Oh, yeah, butter running out both sides of her mouth. Oh, yeah, we know Jesus. We did not act like Jesus, and we did not look like Jesus at that concert. But yet, out of my mouth, I said I knew Him, and Jesus said, yeah, and your heart is far from me. I had a dead heart. I had a stony heart. I was not interested in the things of God. I could care less about the things of God. I wasn't in church. I wasn't going to church. We didn't want to go to church. Hey, I didn't want anything to do with it. And not, you may be here today, and you just come to make somebody quiet. You said, I'm going to go so they'll be quiet. I'm just going to go to hush them up. I'm just going. I want to tell you something. Hey, God loves you. God cares about you. He wants to give you a new heart. He's not mad at you. He loves you. Blowed my mind when I figured that out. Amen. I thought he was mad at me. Praise God, he loves me. Hey, he loved me then. So we got to come to that place that we understand the condition of my heart. I have a stony heart. If I have a stony heart, if you have a stony heart, hey, tell God you have it. Say, God, I've got a stony heart. I'm cold. I'm indifferent. I'm dead to this. I don't, I'm not interested in this, these things. But may God help us. He said, I'll take out the stony heart. Uh, and, 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 uh, he said, I would take out the stony heart of your flesh from your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. That's what a live heart, a heart that feels, a heart that can care, a heart that can cry, a heart that is, gets interested in other things other than selfish things, other than mindful things, my things. But we've got to come. But first of all, we've got to be sober about what my, the condition of my heart. Will our heart will lie, your heart will lie to you. You'll say, oh, you're all right. Oh, you ain't got to make no profession of faith. You ain't got to trust Christ. You, you're fine. You're fine. He'll, t he'll tell you, you're young. You ain't got to worry about it. You don't, you don't have to worry about this. You're in good shape. You're in good health. I heard one time there's a guy went and got a physical. He was 55 years old. Give him a clean bill of health. Said everything's fine. He run every day and he took off the next day running like he always had. Dropped dead of a massive heart attack and just come from a doctor the next day. So you can die anytime. I don't know if that upsets y'all or not, if you knew that. You ain't got to be old to die, and you ain't got to be in bad health to die. Hey, you just, sometimes you just die. You're going to die one of these days. And when you die is when, hey, you've got a day. God's got that day down. Just like your birthday, He's got a death day for you. I hope that don't shock some of y'all. But I'm telling you, where's your heart at? Before you die, you got to. You, we need to figure out where our heart is. We got to figure out if I've got a dead heart, or if I've got a heart of flesh, a heart that desires God, 
a heart that wants God, a heart that beats after God, a heart that loves God. We have to, a, a, a flesh, a fleshly heart that God gives you is a heart that is a directed heart. Do you know this morning you better direct your heart or you'll be in a ditch by this evening? Now it's a fifth Sunday. We don't, we're not having service tonight. Hey, most of us that come back, I want to tell you, if you get your heart out of the direction of the Word of God, out of the Spirit of God, you'll be in a ditch somewhere, somewhere today before the sun goes down. We've got to have a directed heart. Listen to Second uh, Thessalonians 3, 5. It says, And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. Now, that, hey, where is your heart being directed? Is it being directed? We got all kind of things going on. We chase dreams. We chase, we chase everything under the sun, but we don't chase God. We ain't directed by the love of God. We're di- directed by our flesh. Hey, may God help us that we have a heart that is directed in the love of God into all patient waiting for Christ. I don't know where your heart is this morning, but are you waiting on Jesus Christ? Hey, He's coming. He's coming. And we better be ready when He comes. The Lord who directs our heart uh, may God help us. Do you realize it is God that directs our heart into an encounter with Jesus Christ the first time? Because I done told you the natural man don't desire the things of God. If you get to looking for Jesus, it's because Jesus is working on you. There is nothing in you, in the natural man, the natural woman, to say, I think I'll go find God. God has to put that in you and turn your heart toward Him. And then He's over there saying, Here I am! Here I am! You ain't got to look for Him long. He'll let Himself be revealed. Hey, but I'm asking you this morning, is your heart being directed? Is it being guided by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God? And I keep saying that this morning. Hey, we have to be led by the Word of God. That's how powerful the Word of God is. It's powerful. And we've got to come under the subjection. We've got to come in under the authority of the Word of God. May God help us. It is a directed heart. Secondly, it is a discipled heart. It is a discipled heart. I hate to inform us, and I'm pointing at me, you don't know everything. I'm pointing at me. That preacher told me I didn't know everything. Well, you don't. We think we do. It flips me out. I mean, and it flips me out. When people ask your advice and we direct them, we do not disciple them in the Word of God, through the Spirit of God, we direct them out of our fleshly thoughts. Er, Wrong answer. When people come to you and say, what do you think about this? That is your great opportunity to take the Bible and say, it don't matter what I think about it. What does God say about it? If I come to you and I say, I'm thinking about leaving my wife, I hope you don't say, well, I've been thinking the same thing about mine. I think I'll leave, I'll leave mine when you leave yours. Wrong answer. Because that appeals to the flesh. You ought to take the Word of God and say, Brother, you made a vow unto God. And the Bible said, What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. I had a woman tell me one time, I told her that, and she said, That ain't in the Bible. I said, Well, let me just show you. When I showed it to her, she was like, Duh. I said, You think that's just something a preacher says? We've got to become, we've got to come under the Word of God. When people come to you for counsel, it is your opportunity to disciple them. If they care enough about what your opinion is, give them a, disciple them. Teach them the Word of God. Tell them what Jesus says that we're to do. In a marriage, in any aspect of life, God has an answer for us. If He don't, let's shut the book and go home. Because we're wasting our time. But we've got to come to that place that we understand. 
we have the opportunity to be discipled. I encourage you, if you are willing today to say, I have not arrived and I don't know everything, I would encourage you to get with somebody that you have spiritual confidence in. And, I, and listen, I'm talking about faithful. And y'all may throw a rock at me and you can throw a songbook or whatever, but I'm going to say it. If you are not faithful to the, and I tell my, I've told my youngins this, and you can get mad at me if you want to, and that's fine. I've told my youngins, I said, you follow people that are faithful. I said, faithful to the house of God. Three times a week. Amen. I'll amen myself. That's all right. I said, if they ain't faithful to the house of God, don't follow them. And you say, well, that offends me. I'm sorry. Hey, we got it. He said it is required of a steward to be found faithful. If we ever going to do anything in 2018, we got to start with a heart that is faithful. Faithful to God. Faithful to the Word of God. Faithful to the house of God. Because I got people watching me. And you got people watching you. If you trust me with your young people, hey, I want you to be able to say, follow him. And don't, you don't have to worry about what he's telling you. Amen. I'll amen myself. But I got people questioning that. Amen. But that's all right. I'm in the book. Amen. I'm in the book. As long as I'm in the book, I feel pretty good about what I say. Because I ain't got the sense enough to tell you nothing else. Hey man, I'll tell you something wrong every time. The Word of God. So we need to start by being faithful. It is a discipled heart. Coming under somebody. The disciples was under, they followed Jesus around. And when Jesus opened His mouth, they listened. They're, he's trying, He's trying to pour into them disciples. Everything that he can pour into him because he knows he's going back to heaven. I've got to give you this. I've got to give you this. Hey, listen. We've got to give him the truth. Can't respond by... Old Peter, you remember? Peter in the garden, he took that knife and cut off Malchus', Malchus ear. And Jesus put it back on. He said, Peter, we don't fight with the sword. If you fight by the sword, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, you die by the sword. He said he's trying to, he's trying to pump in the Word of God to him. He's trying to give him truth. We have to understand that we have to have a discipled heart. We have to prepare our heart. Ezra, chapter number 7 and verse number 10 says, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. He prepared his heart. He come, he laid this Bible down, and he said, Lord, if, this, if you say it, I'm going to accept it. I'm preparing my heart. I may not, he may not have liked it, but he accepted it in his heart. He said, I've prepared my heart to seek after the law of the Lord. See, many of us ain't preparing our heart. We're doing this. The famous Baptist hymnal that we sometimes sing has become our anthem. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. I don't care what the Bible says. I shall not be moved. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to have it my way. And you ain't going to make me do it any other way. My granny did it this way. Well, bless your heart for Granny. Then you're going in the wrong direction just like Granny was. Hey, man, I'm a grandpa now, so I can say Granny and get by with it. Hey, man, I'm a telling you right now, we've got to prepare our hearts. We got to prepare to hear it. We got to prepare to uh, prepare to apply it. Quit playing church. God help. Your heart ain't with God if you play in church. I don't want to bust your bubble or not or nothing like that, but I am here to tell you the truth this morning, and you're playing church. I don't mean to scare you. If you're playing church, I don't want what you have. 
I would not want to stand before God and give an account of my life playing church. You better not go to go stand for Him on your church attendance clock or card. I was at church. I, I went to church on this day. I don't mean to. I don't mean to upset you, but I think you ought to come to church. But I think it ought to be out of a heart that is prepared to hear and do what God has said. If you go into heaven on your church attendance, whew, you ain't going. I, you just ain't going. You ain't gonna go. You ain't gonna make it. You gonna run out of gas before you get there. Hey, God help us. Y'all all right so far? I, how about half of you's all right? Amen. You said, man, I'll be glad when Nikki gets back. <laughs> He's coming back. He's coming back. Amen. He said, let me finish that verse. He said he prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. Look right here. It's, it, this blows my mind. And to do it. Wow. Wow. And to do it. And then he said, and to teach Israel statutes and judgments. He said, I'm going to get it. The best thing you can do this morning is you get it. You do it. See, we like saying, well, if everybody else would do something, then I'd do it. Oh, no, that ain't the way it works. You go. You be the one. You do it, and then you go to them, and then you teach them. You say, this is the way you do it. Put your arm around and say, this is what you do. This is how you do it. And then you go from there. That's what, that's what Ezra did right here. Let me read just a few more verses of Scripture this morning. The Bible says in Psalms 119, The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Is it in there for that purpose? Is it in there for that reason? Psalms 139, 23, it says, Seek me, O, o God, and know my heart. Hold on. He does. He knows your heart. Try me. The psalmist said, Know my heart, try me. He said, He said, If they, and he said, And know my thoughts, and if they be any wicked way in me, lead me to the way of everlasting. He said, Cur He said, Correct me, God. Do you know what we don't like in 2018? We do not like correction. If the pre if God help if a preacher tried to correct you, well, they'd burn the church down. And say, all right, we need to run him off. I, I heard, and I, I'm going to just share this real fast. They, they used to do communion at this church. I, I read about it, heard about it. He would, the preacher would stand right here and have people file by the cup and the bread. It would be there. He would stand there and people lined up and he would let people go through. And if they would be a person come and lined up that wasn't living for God and he knew it, he would step in. And direct them in another way. If that would happen today, oh my goodness gracious. That'd be a, that'd be a help wanted sign out there. Taking applications for preacher. But really, what that preacher was a doing was a watching for their soul. Because he read the book and some are dead because they partook of it. And some are sick. And he was stepping in the way saying, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Your heart ain't right. You're not where you're supposed to be with God. You're not right. Oh my, that the Holy Spirit of God today would step in and say, don't do it. Don't do it. You're not right. You need to get right. You need to get saved. You need to give me a heart. You need a new heart beating in your chest. You need a heart after me. It's like that heart that they wrote about in the book of Psalms. It said, The heart panteth after the water brook, so my soul panteth after thee, O God. Are we, what are we panting after? What are we looking after? What are we chasing after? We chase after everything. We chase after the dreams of being a ball player. Listen, I ain't here to hurt you. Most of you ain't going to... I'll just go out on a limb and say, None of you going to make it. If you profit the whole world and lose your soul, what have you gained? We've chased a ball and missed God. You say, you against playing ball? No, just on Sunday and, and Wednesday. I ain't against it. Praise God. I ain't played in a while, but I'd like to play softball again. 
I would like to play baseball, but I couldn't see it to hit it. I'd see it when it's way out there, and when it got right here, it'd probably hit me in the face. So I don't do that no more. I ain't against it. I'm for it. I'm for having a good time. I've laughed more yesterday. Had a good time. I got home last night, and I told Jennifer, been with them youngins all day, some of them. I said, man, we had a good day today. I said, we had a great day today. And it thrills my soul. But I'm telling you, hey, we got to chase after God more than anything. Because when it's all been said, when it's all been done, and I stand at the end of my life, Josh Siebert said it. He told me one day, he said, I crushed a ball one time. He said, there's a guy pitching. And he said, that ball come in there. He said, and I just felt like, he said, hey, he's going to throw it. He said, he's going to give me a fastball. He said, and he wasn't hitting his spots. He said, that thing, he said, I watched that ball. He said, it come right down the middle. He said, and I, he said, I hit that ball. He said, he said, I hit it into orbit. He said, I got to run around the base. He said, you know how much credit I get for that in heaven? None. All of that's great, all of that's fine, all of that's fun. But I'm telling you, if it's taking you away from God, I think I'd just go with God. You say, well, what's going to happen? Hey, you may have to get a job. You may not get to play all your life. You're going to have to join the rest of the crowd, amen, and get a job. But I'd go with God. I'd ask God this morning where my heart is. Where my heart is. Is my heart... Daniel, the Bible said, Daniel, and I'm, I'm done. I'm going to ask them to come and get a hymn of invitation ready and just ask God to help us this morning. I think I've gone as... i got another hour or two worth of notes, but I'm, I'll, I'll quit. And I just, I just feel like that's a good place to pull up the brakes and say, you know what? Enough's been said. Enough's been done. You know the condition of your heart. While they're coming, I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a minute. And I want you to just hold, if you raise your hand, don't, just give me a second to see it. I'm not coming to you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call your name out. I'm not going to do any of that. But you, would you be honest today and say the condition of my heart is not right with God? Would you just slip your hand way high? Way high. Thank you. Mike, hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. My heart is not right with God. Anybody else? You can put your hands down. I'm going to ask another question. Maybe today you'd say, I've got a dead heart. I've never been born again. I'm lost, preacher. And I need somebody praying for me. Would you slip that hand way high and say, I've got a dead heart. I'm not interested in the things of God. I'm not interested in the Word of God. And I know that's tough to admit, but I promise you I'm not coming to you. Anybody at all? Anybody at all? Let's pray. They're getting ready. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for the Word of God. Lord, we thank you for the love of God, that you love us enough that we can examine our hearts before the Word of God. Lord, I pray that if there's a heart in here deceived and they think they're saved, Lord, I pray, Lord, through Your Spirit that You would speak to them and reveal truth unto them, that they wouldn't be deceived anymore. Lord, desperately wicked. Oh, God, search us, as the psalmist said, and try me. Lord, and if there be any wicked way in me, Lord, correct me. Lord, reveal it to me. I wonder if there would be many in the church house ask that this morning. Lord, that we would come under the authority of Your Word. I praise You. I thank You for what You're doing. Lord, You're just moving us. You're moving us as individuals. You're moving us as church. Lord, to be more conformed to Your image. That we respond to Your Word and Your work. Help us, Lord, I pray. Lord, we love you. Thank you for what you're going to do in this invitation time. 
we bless you. We give you glory. Can we stand and just, and they got the words on the screen and let's sing to the glory of God. Let's sing to Him. If you raised your hand, Jesus loves you. Would you come this morning? Would you make that heart right with God? That's right. There's some stepping out. I'd just step out and I'd come. I'd say, dear God, help me, Lord. You know my heart, Lord. Would you come this morning and just ask God just to speak to you, to draw you, to lean on Him, to give you His heart, to give you His understanding. Would you come this morning? Others have come. You need to come. My heart's not right with Christ. I'm not right with God. I'm lost, preacher. Would you come this morning? Would you give your heart to the Lord? Would you say, here I am, God. Take me. Mold me. Make me into the image that you want me to be. Would you come this morning? Just as I am and waiting now. Would you ask Him to help you be faithful? Would you say, God, help me be faithful? Give me a desire to be faithful to the house of God. Help me be faithful to the Word of God. Help me be faithful to pray. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Would you just come this morning and just say, help, Lord. I need your help. Would you come? You can come this morning. Jesus loves you. As I am the tossed about with many a call, with many a doubt, fighting within and fears without a land of God. of you to do good, but your heart really ain't in it. You have to make yourself do it. I want to ask you to come and say, Lord, I want you to give me a new heart. I want you to put that heart of flesh in me. Lord, where to be my desire, where to be my want to, where I'll get a thrill out of it. Every time I get the, every time you give me the opportunity to do it, Lord, I jump at it. I'm not hesitant saying, oh, I got to do this. I got, listen, it ought to be our heart to do it. Hey, maybe that's you this morning. You do good things, but your heart your heart ain't in it. 
That's just like them telling Jesus that they're honoring Him with their lips. We may be honoring Him with their deeds, but but it, but it ain't doing any good. It ain't changing our heart. we got to have a heart change. Would you come this morning, if that's you, as they sing one more stanza? Nobody comes, we'll go, but I believe God's wanting to speak to somebody. Wanting to change your heart. He's a knocking at the door. Would you come? Glory to God, it's good to be saved. It ain't a drudgery. It's a joy to be saved. It's a joy to know Him. Ain't nothing, no hardship to it. It's glorious. Father, we commit this service into your hands. You show our good to us. Lord, you give us a new heart. Lord, and I bless your name for it. I pray you bless these that's come around this altar. Lord, I pray that you bless these in the, in the congregation. Lord, that you're speaking to Dylan with. God, you know our heart. I pray you'd lead us. God, to understand it. God, help us to do it. Help us not just talk about it, but praise God, help us to do it. I love you. You give us a great day in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let me let me remind you just before we go quickly. Uh, tomorrow night we'll be here in service at seven o'clock. Choir needs to be here at six thirty. Need the parking team. Need the welcome committees or welcome teams uh, to be here. We need to. Uh, there'll be people coming from all different counties coming in. Uh, we'll need to show them where to go, where to park. And uh, just, uh, you may have to give them your seat. That'll be fine, too. We'll drag out more seats if we have to. That'll be fine. But just be mindful of that. And the National Day of Prayer on Thursday. Please try to attend that wherever you are uh, to go and support that and pray for our county, our country, and ask God's will to be done. I love you. I appreciate you. It's the fifth Sunday. We'll not have a service tonight. Give you an opportunity to go visit.